Peace be with you. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We're in the house, y'all. We're back. We are back. Welcome. Welcome back. Let us begin our worship. Bible's going to come in. I'm going to come in. Christ's going to come in. And we're going to sing. Please rise as you're able and let us begin our worship.
Please join us in our call to worship, gathering prayer. In sacred times of word, wonder, and awe, in ordinary days of work and play, in, in every, every moment, moment God, God is with, with us. us. Whether we are stuck in doubt's mud or standing on faith's shoreline, in, in every place, place God, God is with us. us. In those who teach us and those who trouble us, in those who surprise us, and those who forgive us. In every person, God is with us. Let us pray. In this moment, gracious God, you have called us away from the world to a place and a time where we can commune with you and with one another. Hallow this communion, we pray. Calm our anxious spirits that we may set apart to hear your word through which we receive grace to bring about the obedience of faith. Open us to the reality of your all and grace and love, both in this place and in the wider world. May we, by our words and actions, be bearers of your kingdom. In the name and the Spirit of Christ. Amen. You may be seated. As we stand before God, we think of all the ways we bicker with others, all those times we have not shown mercy and grace to those around us, all those times we know we fell short. We have a lot of those times. Let us bow our heads then and confess our sins to God as we pray together this prayer of confession. It is never easy for us to confess, but deep down inside, we know that grace, we have trouble with grace. We are eager to judge and punish all of us. Free, we are Forgive us, sir. Give us, servant God. God's hand of mercy is stretched out to us, making a way through all that threatens us to touch us with grace and hope. Family, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Please be seated as we listen to God's word. Today's reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verses 5 through 7, 10 through 14, and 21 through 29. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed toward the people, and they said, What have we done, letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 elite chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to, to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone that we can serve the Egyptians, for, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and cloud, looked down on the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into a panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. God is still speaking. Amen.
Before we begin, I just want to thank you for your prayers last week. And I was out with that dreaded virus, COVID. Uh, just so you know, I never really got horribly ill. I had about 13 hours of the whole time where I felt like I had a bad cold. And the rest of the time, I was just tired. And the brain fog is real. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> but I'm fine now. I still have a bit of a sniffle. I uh, attended a good friend's wedding at uh, Harkness Park in, in uh, Waterford Saturday or Friday. And the gardens there are beautiful and filled with things that I'm clearly allergic to. <laughs> But I didn't leave the gardens because they were beautiful. Pray with me. <clears throat> Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Let it overflow with love. My cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, let it overflow with love. Speak, Lord, for we, your people, are listening. Amen. One morning, the Egyptian elites woke up, still in the throes of their misery. They'd just been through several horrible things. Most significant, the sudden death of all the firstborn sons in the country, human and animal. If you think about it, they had to be devastated. And regardless of how you feel about Pharaoh and the Egyptians, it has to make you feel something, at least in the neighborhood, of sympathy. The things God did to them to get them to release the Hebrews, wow. They had to be in some serious emotional distress. A lot of people died. A lot of Egyptians. Makes sense that they let the Hebrews go. But the Egyptians didn't release the slaves because of their grief. They let them go because they thought perhaps the Hebrews might be right. Maybe it was their God bringing all of this trauma and devastation to them, putting them through all that turmoil. They were superstitious people. They believed in unseen forces acting on the earth. They had a lot of gods, but this Hebrew God and the stuff he did, that had to scare them. They did not want to mess with people who had that kind of a God. So they let the Hebrews go. And the, so the children of Israel packed up their stuff, grabbed a bunch of stuff that technically belonged to the Egyptians, but were gained off the back of the slaves, grabbed everything they could carry, and left. Took off not knowing where they were going. Took off following Moses to find and occupy the promised land. The Hebrews probably weren't gone long before the Egyptians woke up to a startling realization. Stuff wasn't getting done anymore. Nobody was cleaning. Nobody was cooking. Nobody was doing the work. The slaves used to do it, but now, now they were gone. Probably started grumbling. How are we going to keep this country running without our slaves? We built this place on slavery. Our entire, entire economy is based on slavery. Now what are we going to do? So they decided to get them back. Forgot all about their fear of the Hebrew God. They needed things to go back to the way they were before. They needed to make Egypt great again. Back in the old days where the Hebrews were they're taking care of everything and happy. They had to get them back. Pharaoh gathered most of his elite fighters to go after the escaping Hebrews. He probably could have taken just some basic troops, but he wanted revenge. 
they made him look bad. And they killed a lot of his people. Pharaoh's grief and fear turned into hatred. He would crush them. They would catch up with the runaways, bust a few heads, take out the leaders, kill a bunch of them, and everything would be back to normal. They would create as much terror as possible, and the Hebrews would willingly come back, come running back. If he needed to, he could even hold a ballot and make them vote to go back to Egypt. That way it would look legit in the real world. He would make them pay. Moses had to know that Pharaoh would wake up and realize what he had done. He was going to come after Moses and the Hebrews. And he was going to be brutal when he caught them. A whole lot of Hebrews were going to die. But Moses trusted in his God to lead him when they confronted Pharaoh. He trusted in his God when the plagues came. He trusted in his God because his God promised to deliver him. And every time he trusted in his God, his God delivered. God promised, and Moses knew that God keeps God's promises. He knew Pharaoh was coming, but he pressed forward and trusted God, and to validate his trust, God directed their way, a pillow of cloud in the day and fire at night, God always in front, leading them. The story says that God helped Moses get a little tricky in their route. Moses led the people in a wandering path, made it seem like they were lost in the wilderness. But Moses, I think he knew what he was doing. He'd been a shepherd. He knew how to survive in the wilderness. He knew that they couldn't outrun Pharaoh, but maybe this little tactic would make him relax his guard a bit. Any little advantage they could get on the out, over the overwhelming forces. And they might have a better chance of retaining their freedom. As they walked, they came up against a natural obstacle, the Red Sea, or the Reed Sea, depends on which translation you read. A good commander learns how to use the natural terrain to their advantage. This could work for them. See, Moses knew that the, all those Egyptian soldiers and horses and chariots were going to be heavy. They were fierce weapons of mass destruction in some situations, but none of those forces, none of those weapons did well in the mud. They were too heavy. If Moses could get them to chase the Hebrews through the mud, he could reduce the threat and give the Hebrews more time to get further away, maybe even pick off a few of the soldiers in the shadows and reduce their force. It could work. It still works. The Ukrainians used it a lot against the Russians. Problem was, the Hebrews weren't exactly light either. And first of all, there was a whole bunch of them. And they had a whole bunch of stuff to help them survive. All their stuff and all their stuff they took from the Egyptians. So mud wasn't a great thing for them either. So when the Hebrews looked up and saw the Egyptians on the horizon, they freaked. I'm not going to lie. I probably would have been cussing Moses too if I was there. We told you to leave us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. Yeah, it sucked being a slave, but it was better than being slaughtered out here in the wilderness. At least we would have got a grave. You got to admire Moses' courage under pressure. He's got the Egyptians on his heel ready to snap, and he's got his own people ready to hang him. Stand firm and don't be afraid, he said. You are about to see the power of our God. Won't be no more Egyptian army after this one. You just hold on a minute. Moses trusted his God to deliver them. God promised. And Moses trusted God to keep God's promises. And you know what? God did. God told Moses to stretch out his walking staff. And when he did it, the water separated, creating walls on each side. And then the wind came and dried up the mud. And the pillar of fire that had been guiding them through the night went behind them to slow down the army, give the Hebrews more time to get away. 
and get to the other side. The Egyptians saw that the Hebrews were almost in their grasp. And so with a renewed vigor, they charged, Pharaoh leading the way in his fierce and magnificent chariot, ready to spill some Hebrew blood. They charged the Hebrews following them, charging through the parted waters and on the dry sea, ready to pounce. And, well, you know what happened. You saw the movie. <laughs> oh, Mary, don't you weep. Martha, don't you moan. Pharaoh's army got drowned in the Red Sea. Or drowned it, as they said in my house. All God's little Hebrew children got away free. I remember preachers hitting this story so hard that by the time they got to this part, somebody would be running around the church and almost all of us would be slayed in the spirit. God rescued the Israelites from slavery and then certain death. And if God did it for them, God can do it for me. That should make even the frozen chosen want to leap for joy. <laughs> this story has been used in so many ways to give hope to so many different peoples suffering oppression, and rightfully so. It gets to the core of the covenant God made with Abraham. And we know it's all about the covenant. Israel was in danger of virtual annihilation, but God delivered them. God delivered them from certain death. That's powerful. Now, I'll be the first to admit that there are all kinds of issues with this story. God's power is stronger and therefore better than imperial power, so trusting God the creator instead of the things we create and treat like God's, an admittedly important lesson, and one that we should take hope, we should take to hope and heart. But a whole lot of people had to die to give this lesson. Worlds had to be irreparably changed so that we could get this lesson, that we should trust in God, that God would deliver us. I'm not going to lie. It troubles me. Even as it empowers me, it makes me weep. Anytime I see someone suffering, even my enemy, it makes me weep. And at the same time, I cannot deny how real it is. I'm a black man in America. I've only got to go back three or four generations to find family who were enslaved. I only got to go back a couple of generations to find family who was murdered for being uppity. I only got to go back a few generations to find family who was forced off their land, forced to forget their language and culture, thrown into poverty and ravaged by new diseases and murdered as savages. And I know I'm not the only one. Ladies, how far do you back do you have to go to find your oppression? Tuesday? <laughs> LGBTQ plus folks, non-binary folks, the poor, those suffering from addiction, the immigrant, the refugee, there's something about almost all of us that lets us identify with the children of Israel in this story. And this story does, in fact, give me hope, just as it did my ancestors who heard it while they themselves were in captivity. We hear this story, and we know that we can be free. And all the bad stuff in the story, all the killing, all the death, well, I hate to say it, but it's real. We kill a lot of people in our struggles for freedom. I'm not saying it's right. In fact, I don't think it is, but it's real. It doesn't have to be that way, though. That's why I need you to recognize that the tension and the struggle for freedom and the pain it usually causes is very real. People get hurt. People die. That part is real, and I need you to understand that. But if that part is real, wouldn't the rescue part also be real? Let me say that again. 
if the horrible parts are real, wouldn't the rescue part also be real? Family, it is real. God will rescue you. That's real. I know it is for me. I can't tell you how many times I felt like my back was against the wall and a violent death was figuratively or literally imminent. But by some miracle, I was rescued. By some miracle, I survived. By some miracle, the seas parted before me. The wind dried the mud, and I walked through to freedom. I bet if you think about it, you'll find those moments in your life too. Family, God will rescue. If you hold on and trust, you will get through. So as I close, there are a couple of things I want you to think about from this story that I haven't quite mentioned yet. First, God rescued the children of Israel from the Egyptians, but they were still in the wilderness. So their problems didn't end with their rescue from Pharaoh. You know the story, you saw the movie. But if you pay attention, you'll also notice that each time they ran into issues, every time for the rest of their existence to this day, God gets them out. Even the issues they caused themselves, God rescued them. Yes, family, God parts the seas and dries our muddy paths. But that doesn't mean we're out of the wilderness. So don't be surprised when new suffering comes. Just face it with confidence, knowing that God will once again bring you out. But that's not the main thing I think we need to hear in this message today. See, the Israelites were terrified, but their issue wasn't the Red Sea or the Sea of Reeds they faced. It wasn't the long journey they faced to get to the Promised Land. It wasn't the uncertainty of their future. Yes, those things were concerned, but that's not what brought them so much terror to the point where they were ready to give up and give in. It wasn't what was ahead of them. It was what they left behind. They were out of Egypt and on their way forward, but that past issue, those past issues, were hot on their tail, and it terrified them. But just when that past was ready to pounce and take them back, just when it was ready to strike them down, just when it was ready to drag them back into captivity, just when they thought all hope was lost and that their past was going to crush them once again, God put things back in order. God made a path for them to get through. Then God put things back in order and let nature itself destroy that past. Fairy Pharaoh and his armory got drowned in the Red Sea. They were no longer a threat. And the children of Israel were free. Their past was destroyed and forgotten. And they were free. Some of us spend a lot of time running and hiding from stuff that's behind us. And on the surface, our fears are justified. Our past would fi are filled with powerful forces that, if left unchecked, can destroy us. And now it seems we've angered them by seeking our freedom from them. We don't know if we can survive if they get our ha their hands on us again. I know that place. I've been there many times. But family, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to worry about what's behind you anymore. See, God has sent the fiery pillar to mask your escape and slow down the pursuit. And God has already sent someone to stretch out their staff. God has already started parting the seas and drying the mud so that you can safely cross. And God will set things right and destroy the power that your past has over you. You are on the other side now. You are on dry land now. You have escaped from the threat of your past. Neither Pharaoh nor his army have any power over you anymore. You are free. Yes, you will still have troubles. 
Yes, you will still need a rescue now and then. But now you can go forward on your journey with assurance that your rescue is coming. It'll be there when you need it. You are free from your past family. You have crossed to the other side. You have been forgiven and you are loved. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Then come on. Let's go find the promised land. Amen.
You can't see because I got my mask on, but my mouth is open. <laughs> like, wow. Thank you. And now we respond to the word with our prayers. For whom and for what shall we pray? For all the kids in our school systems that are struggling, uh, for the adults that are working tirelessly to support them, and for those in power to be willing to come back to the table to negotiate in good faith the contract that acknowledges the work that's being done. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Prayers for Jenica, who is recovering from surgery. God, in your mercy. Yeah. You want to look at the one you sent me, Cal? Prayers of thanksgiving for the birth and life of my firstborn, who will be turning 30 this week. God, in your mercy. For the miracle of having a, a baby at, what, 10? Two prayers, one for Leah Pillsbury, who is suffering from long COVID. Uh, prayers for Leah and for her family. And prayers for uh, Yabo Shah, who has returned, uh, has a retur had a return of cancer. So prayers for he and his family also. God, in your mercy. Healing for our friend, Will Hinton. God, in your mercy. In the choir. Continued prayers for those who are dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. Continued prayer for those who are dealing with the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. God, in your mercy. Got a few coming from online. From Benjamin, prayer of healing and comfort for Tatiana, Bernice, and those like them who are still struggling with health issues. God, in your mercy. Yeah. I lift up Joe Buchanan and her daughters and their family as we commit George's ashes this afternoon. God, in your mercy. Um, yesterday, I attended a memorial service on Zoom for my friend Greg Dominio, who died of uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. And his life touched so many. There were people from all over the world who were so um, uh, touched and moved and inspired by him. And thanks that there are people in this world who are that good and who can inspire others. Thank you. God, in your mercy. Still praying for your grandmother, Josiah. Uh, healing for Al. God, in your mercy. Yeah. We lift up prayers for all those who are in our bulletin. Those who have sent in requests, those who have requests that they've not sent, you hold in your hearts. God, in your mercy. We will move this time of prayer 
into our time of sharing at the table, communion. This sacrament that we practice is a sign of our togetherness with Christ, a sign of our togetherness with each other in Christ. Let us enter prayerfully into our service, our sacrament of communion. Using a liturgy borrowed from the Iona community. The table of bread and wine is now to be made ready. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often, and you who have not been for a while, you have, who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Let us pray together. <clears throat> Loving God, through your goodness, we have this bread and cup to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing of this bread, so that we may know your touch in all bread, all matter. We celebrate the life that Jesus shared. Gathered into the one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those. We offer you praise, dear God, and hearts lifted high. 
For in the communion of your love, Christ comes close to us, and we come close to Christ. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea, and sky, we sing to you. With the angels of light who envelop us, with all the saints before and beside us, with brothers and sisters, east and west, we sing to you. And with our loved ones, separate from us now, who yet in this mystery are close to us, we join in the song of your unending greatness. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is our brother Jesus who walks with us the road of our world's suffering and who knows to us, who is known to us in the breaking of bread. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread and having blessed it, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given to you. In the same way, he took the wine and having given thanks, he poured it out and gave the cup to his disciples saying, this cup is the new, new relationship with God, sealed with my blood. Take this and share it. Hear us, O Christ, and breathe your spirit upon us and upon this bread and wine. May they become for us your body, vibrant with your life, healing and renewing, and make us whole. And as the bread and wine which we now eat and drink are changed into us, may we be changed again into you, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh loving and caring in the world. Amen. He whose table was open to all is now present in this bread. He whose word welcomed friend and stranger offers friendship through this cup. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity. Plant it more deeply than all that is wrong. Well. The gifts of God for the people of God. I call for the, the deacons, or the servers. We have gluten free Jesus crackers. And we have the cup. We ask if you are able to come forward and be served. If you prefer to not walk, please let us know and we will bring it to you.
Does anyone want us to serve them in your seats? If you have not yet, please eat and drink to the glory of God. And in remembrance of our Savior. Let us pray. Living God, in this sacrament we have shared in your eternal kingdom. May we who taste this mystery forever serve you in faith, hope, and love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation. In the church, and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now, family, we have dined together. And now let's spend a few moments fellowshipping and passing the peace of Christ one to another. Few moments. There are any announcements, please make your way forward. I know we got a couple. <laughs> All right, if you will. Kindly take your seats. There'll be plenty of time over cake and pie and coffee to get into some really deep conversations and build some really strong relationships. But right now, let's hear our announcements. Come on down. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I am here on behalf of Service and Justice, and I'm asking you to mark your calendars for October 23. That will be uh, two Sundays from today, I believe. Connect will be holding a candidates assembly where they will speak with the gubernatorial, secretary of state, and treasurer candidates. And they will get their stances on some of the issues that Connect is working on. The event will be held at Benai Jacob in Bridgeport at, I believe it's 3.30, and we are hoping to have a strong presence at this event. So how many have scrolled down the e-blast to the very bottom and clicked on the link and registered for this event so far? Any hands? Oh, someone has, great. Does anyone hope to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the e-blast and find the link to the Connect event and register for this event. We'll Great. put it at the top Thank next week. <laughs> we'll move it to the top. So you can attend in person, but there is also a Zoom link option for remote um, attendance. 
but you do have to register to receive the link for the Zoom. So please do go on and register. It's just very important that we show a, a great number of folks in attendance at this event. Uh, it really legitimizes Connect's mission and really helps them moving forward as they present legislation uh, in the state to really try and improve our communities. So please join me, and uh, if you have any questions about it or need to carpool, contact Cher or myself. Thank you. So there is no youth of, uh, group event this week. It was actually last night. They slept out um, on the church lawn. Um, so there's not one this week. And next week, um, it will be bowling. So I will put more information out when I receive it. Good morning. Most of you know me. My name is John Sawyer. And I sort of speak for the buildings at the church, among other jobs. Um, and I'm sure you all noticed the lack of carpeting and lack of two rows of pews up front here this morning. Uh, there is a history told in the floor as shown here. And if anybody would like to hear it, I will stick around up front after the service and do a little commentary. Kind of embarrassing when you're the one who ran it, you didn't remember. There are now two accessible pews on the center church aisle, which I would also be happy to show you later on. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. So three exciting announcements. Um, please govern, govern yourselves accordingly. The first one about Connect, these candidate forums are really important, having large numbers of people. Can't, politicians run off, the, off of votes. They say every person that shows up to a rally represents like 10 people, 10 votes. So if we show up with a bunch of folks, either online or in Zoom, and Connect shows up with a bunch of folks, they're gonna listen to what we have to say. So please, if you're able, make it to that. I attended the Oasis meeting with um, the folks from the other churches the other day, and I gotta tell you, I wish I was in high school again, or actually middle school, because they do some fun stuff. Um, so if you know any kids, they don't even have to be members. If you know any kids that are looking for something to do, there are still three or four kids out there with not a full schedule. Let's get, those in, get them involved in the Oasis. And we got a new floor. So make sure you come to check it out. Just so you know, this little square spot here is not a trap door. <laughs> you will not fall through. You can step in that spot. I'm not gonna say it's not gonna spring you forth. It might be an ejector door, but it's not a trap door. Anyway. As we have entered this church with thanksgiving in our hearts, let us remember that we have the opportunity to joyfully share from the bounty which God has provided us. In the love and name of Christ, let us receive our morning offering. We're not quite at, yet back to the walking. We'll have to get there soon again if the folks want it. But you know, the same paths are available for you to gift. You may use the online on our website donate button. You may leave money, cash or a check in the basket in the back. Don't leave your credit card. You can use the square, I believe it's back there if you wanna swipe your card. Find a way, mail a check to the, to the parish house. Do whatever you need to do to help us in our work in building the kingdom of God, in making this world a just place, a comfortable place for all to live. And if you don't have any money to give, join us in the work. And if you do have money to give, give the money and join us in the work. Caesar.
Pray with me. Good shepherd who leads and guides us through all the trials and tribulations of our lives. We bring these gifts to celebrate the ministries of justice and hope in which our church is involved. Be with us and cause us to grow in our faith and our service. Amen. And while you're standing, let's get ready to go. Please join me in our closing hymn. So this brings us to the end of this worship. First day back in the meeting house. I hope it was as good for you as it was for me. It felt really nice being back in this space. I miss the intimacy of the, of the great hall. But there's nothing like this, this place. And we got the organ. Can't forget the organ. Freshly tuned. Freshly tuned. Ooh. All right. I didn't know you could tune it right. I also want to thank Dom 
We have a new audio set up here. I don't know if you noticed, but I can hear everybody a lot better. Thank you, Don, for doing a great job for the first time using this new system. Don't ever leave. We need you every time. So, Pharaoh's army got drowned. It drowned in the Red Sea. God rescued the Israelites from a certain, if not annihilation, genocide. Rescued them from really, really bad times. And sent them back out into the wilderness. They still struggled. But now they had a further assurance that God would protect them. Family, we're in the wilderness. And there are forces that are trying to hold us down, hold us back, keep us enslaved. But we know a power greater than any power of this world. We are part of the creators. We are God's children. So don't let the troubles get you down. Look instead for your miracle because it's coming, right around the corner. Live in expectation of it, because it's coming. God will rescue you. It's the covenant, and we all know it's all about the covenant. You have to get t-shirts. God bless, amen. Well, family, our worship has ended. Let our and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.